right? So um, the Alohu, let's look at first. <coughs> Um, the one I was thinking we could discuss was the, as I said earlier, the, the pregnant one. I think it's called Zero Hour. Yes, it is. Thank you. Oh, there's zero. a picture in the PDF. Yeah, I think we might have to. <coughs> on the second page. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead. I'm going to have you refer to your um, the article. So, um, if you'll have that up, as, as Rachel said on the second page, zero hour. Okay, that doesn't seem to be online. Um, but I will pull up um, where we had several caplets, but see if we can find. Um, oh, yeah. Mother and child, okay. Uh, yeah, so a couple of these were the first, well, several of these were in there, right? Um, let's go ahead and look at the, um, the first one from 1940. Uh, this is the one in the text, okay? Um, and then We'll also look at a um, Barbara Hepworth. We're going to look at her 1934 piece, um, the one that they discussed. I know that reading was a little bit difficult. Did anybody struggle with that reading a little bit? It's going to be avant garde era because he was the, the writer was very much like <laughs> these five other essays that I read about her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. And, and it, it talks about particular. Uh, Herbert Reed, and, and but I think the one that's even more important is the, the Adrian Stokes. Adrian Stokes is a very well-known art critic, so I don't think you know what to make of her, make of her work, and we'll talk about why it was so strange for him to have to deal with the work. Um, let's see. And this is in the Tate Gallery um, in London, so if you've ever been there, you might have. Seen this? Okay, so we've got the two up here, and you can see it okay, Lauren? Yeah. Okay, and then if you'll have the other one opened up, again, second page of the Catlet reading. So we've got three different versions of Mother and Child here. Oh, wait, not Catlet, sorry, I'm going to move. I had opened up for that. Um, so what did you want to write for this? I noticed for the um, Alulu and the um, um, Catlin, mm -hmm. um, that it's sort of clutching like protection over the child while with the Barbara, I don't know, it's just like two entities just together. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like the figure on the left is reaching out towards the, I was saying, to see the child on the right in for the embrace. So mm -hmm. I think it's just a different moment in the same pose. Right. Right before the actual clutching. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So you read as is about to, about to embrace about the to child. Embrace the child. Okay, yeah. that's interesting. Does anybody else? Um, see, to me, it looks like the mother is reclining. Yeah, I think the child is like resting on her lap while she's reclining. Mm -hmm. They're called reclined, or like talked of like that's what he referred it to the author. It's like she's kind of leaning back on her one arm and her head, and yeah. her other arm and is stretched out to support the child on her lap. Right, right, and 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 you're right, and, and you yeah. know, one obvious difference is this highly abstract, right? Yes. Um, but you still detect the human, the reclining human <coughs> figure there, right? Which is something that she was known for, something Henry Moore was known for. So in a way, she's kind of um, influenced by him. But then, like you said, so you kind of see it as on her lap then? Mm -hmm. Is that how you see it? But you see it as about to embrace. Yes. Yeah. I think you're missing maybe the picture that we're talking about right now. Right, say that again, Lauren? I think I might be missing the one picture we're talking about right now, because I'm looking at the ones. I think you screen shared only a window. Oh, not oh, that's true. I can't do you that. Can do huh? You can do sharing and then re-share. Like, re Wait, what if you drag this tab into the browser that's being shared? Then she has to flip between them. Oh. Um, so you can stop sharing on the bottom right. and then go back to re-sharing, but do the entire screen. Share your screen. So, 
to back to underneath. So how do I do that then? Screen share. And I ah, okay. All right. Not just Okay, so um, can you see them now, Lauren? Yes. Okay. And, and you know, also, we should realize, I'm not trying to be this, this definitive, you know, like, because we have to be careful when we do these comparisons, because I don't want to say, like, that this is indicative of her work, and this is all she did, and this is, I mean, because they did a wide variety of these things, right? So I'm not necessarily trying to set these up as being, you know, sole examples of their work. So just kind of bear that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So what were you saying? Okay, so the, the 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 embrace seems to be a little bit more apparent in Caplets and uh, Lobus, um, whereas here it's going to take place at all. It's in the future kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Or it's more like double distance. So there's one thing like mother child thing, like holding a baby to your chest or like clutching your at your belly, but that's more like a little distant. Well, I mean, how did? And again, we want to be careful here. Right. I don't want to say that we're not going to. I'm not necessarily saying. Essentially, what you're reading in the Hepler article is a psychoanalytical reading of the work. It's actually a psychoanalytical reading of a psychoanalytical interpretation of the work. And that's why I was um, So I'm not necessarily saying this is the only way to see the work, but I think it's worth discussing. Because essentially, you have a female artist making, you have a male artist commenting, and then you have a female art historian commenting on the male commenting on it. So, you know what I mean? It, so, it, you know, this is one of many interpretations. So, I'm not trying to set this up as a definitive. But let's talk about the Hepworth. I mean, what, what does he say? I mean, you kind of, you kind of, I think patients caught on to the fact that there, you could read this as sort of a disconnect between the mother and the child. I mean, the mother doesn't have the actual head. Okay. Oh. That's, yeah. It, I mean, that's true, but. Yeah, I don't know, but the baby has no arms. <laughs> the baby's a fish. Well, I guess that's all I can see. Nothing, it's a goldfish. I wouldn't know that it's a mother and child. She doesn't have the ability to. No! Well, what do they say in the article? I mean, I know it's hard. And I think actually, we're not going to talk about every aspect of it because. There are just a few kind of ideas that I want to highlight, but I mean, what did you get from it? I know it's difficult. I mean, for me, this doesn't look distant. Okay. Okay. Good. So you still see it as okay. yeah, because like the arm is extended out. It's kind of resting with the child. The child's on their lap, just because it's not pressed up against their chest. Like it looks like they're sleeping together almost, and in a way that's way more intimate to me. Okay. It reminds me of like. Play. Like when you bounce like a kid on your knee and you're sitting on the floor, like you have the one arm to make sure they don't fall off, but you're not like holding them closely because they're going all over the place. So this is an older child that you're playing. I guess to be like how like Rachel's was Rachel like it? No, like kids like sleeping, like mm -hmm. I can see like all the time like kids like curling behind like their mom's legs and sleeping mm -hmm. that way. Because uh -huh. I know like I did that all the time like when I couldn't sleep when I was little and like that's what I pictured doing. More comfortable. Or, or that way, it was, like, like if they're like laying on like their side, which is kind of like that can be like. <laughs> <laughs> and so you, would you still read that as intimate? Yeah, because you're okay. like curled <laughs> with them. Mm. Well, I. I kind of see it the way patience does, in the sense that it's kind of more of like, to me, like it kind of like the one on the right, like she's like, I mean, obviously, it's not an arm, but like to me, it looks like she's like reclining and like holding herself up at the same time. She's like huge, like. You <laughs> see as much as a disconnect, and this is where. Or I see it more as like that's more of the protective. Um, bond between the child and the mother and this one you know possibly too in a way because pregnant and it's hard to tell but that one's more you know letting the child be its own entity while still being there so it's not exactly distant but it's <coughs> some it's disconnect as, yeah. it's not as close as I mean, the, 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 when you're referring to this at some point i can't remember uh, the article or the somewhere else that everybody spoke. They, they talk about this sort of as a the, the dependent stroke the independence of the child. Mm -hmm. Well, they talk so, about so that with Catlett. That, that, when I saw this, it reminded me of Catlett's piece where the child, you could 
take yeah. another child apart. Right. So Becca, right. she said like they asked her why she did that, and it's because okay, the kids need to be independent. Like that's what I more saw. Okay. <laughs> and we can certainly bring in other mother. I mean, I didn't need to set this up as I said, this is definitive. Um, you know, comparing, contrasting. Um, so you're talking about the one with the wait, yeah, with the um, um, it was on the last screen, I think. I think you're talking about this one. All right. Yeah. This is the cat that you're talking about. Literally, there was the they were. I don't know what it looked like, but they discussed it in the article. Yeah. yeah I think it's this one. Um, so in a way, you can you know this is this is a good comparison between these two. Um, and again, we're looking at a broad range of their work, not just you know a few. So feel free to bring in other examples. And you're right. This was brought in. To, <coughs> what kind of similarities do you see here? This is really. I'm glad you brought that up. This is, this is a really interesting comparison. There's like, like the hole in the arm of the mom, and then the hole up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And also the mom's legs, kind of. Or negative space underneath. Them. Can the gold okay. come off? <laughs> <laughs> I have to look into that because I was always under the impression they were separate. Um, but then I thought I read somewhere that it's all made out of the same block. But I'm not sure I read that correctly because that sure does look to me like it's separate. So yeah. I can't say for sure. Must be I need to look at that one. Purged. Like, hmm? Unless yeah. it's leaning against the mom's arm. Or it's like attached to that. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Well, it's so they're independent. Oh, okay. 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 It sure looks independent, doesn't it? Yeah. No, here it's not. I don't, well, I don't think it could be. Um, it doesn't say in the article. It's not hard to tell. It could be. Um, okay, so you've got the, the independence of the child. But what other kind of similarities do you have? I mean, if you take like the thing, the little nub thing, it kind of looks like it's tilting away. The <laughs> nub thing, <laughs> where the head would be. Oh, oh, It kind of looks like it's like tilting away. So like the heads are like looking away. Yeah, it is interesting. Okay, so they both have an obvious set of boys. Right? Except here, the child actually fills the void, and here the child is outside the void. Um, and you're right, it does seem to be this, I'm not saying it's there or not, you know, I, but it's it's worth talking about because that's what they're saying. They're basically saying that her work is autobiographic, right? This is the kind of the point of the reading. And I, I don't, you know, whether, and we'll kind of look at this critically, can we look at, should we be looking at it from that point of view? Um, and, and the idea of gender being into this, because we don't tend to look at Henry Moore's in this kind of way. Henry Moore did tons of mothering children, but because he wasn't a mother, a woman, he wasn't a mother, we don't tend to read it as autobiographical. So is it fair to read this then? Or do you think it actually kind of gives us more credibility, so to speak? So we'll, we'll come back to that. But, but let's say, so the void, and, and, and the way that this is interpreted by some is that this is sort of like where the baby was, yeah? And so there literally is kind of a void. I don't know this sounds cheesy, and I don't think I'm the only one. I think it's fairly typical for some mothers to have like a like a mourning period after they've it it so part of the depression. I guess that's tied into actually that's weird because with that baby I didn't have postpartum depression. I didn't put those two together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, makes sense. Um, that they actually are two separate pieces. They just look like they're from the same piece. Okay. Okay. I thought, you know, I, I said I really read that somewhere, but every time I look at this, I'm I'm thinking they look separate. Yeah. It's they're although they are independent sculptural elements, both mother and child appear to have been carved from the same piece of country land alabaster. Oh, you're saying they're they're from the same block, but they're independent. They appear yeah. to have been carved from the same piece, but they're independent sculptural elements. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's weird because they appear independent to me, but maybe that's just. Okay, maybe if I yeah maybe if I pay more attention I've seen this but I've really paid attention so much in years. Um, okay, so but again this void. So in a way you can see this as being that sadness. It's so freaky because you're like I'm so glad to have this baby out of me, but yet it's like I can never go back. <laughs> you're like, my stomach, where is it gone? It's kind of traumatic, actually. It was really freaky. Uh -huh. And so I kind of identify with that, right? But so in a way you can see that as this. I'm missing something. I have my baby, but I'm still missing. That or you can see, see it as like a why there's the hole. Yes, exactly. And this is how some people read it. I'm not saying that's what we'll get to whether Heart Network intended this to be read this way or not. But this is certainly one of the interpretations is that 
But you know, the whole idea of the piercing, what came from Moore. Moore was doing the same thing with his works. Could, so, so it could simply be that you know the whole was part of what the abstract sculptors were doing, and she's just so are we reading too much into that? But if we if we think about it in terms of a void where the baby was and where the baby is, you can again see it as a way. Does this connect them for you? Or does it again kind of like you're talking about disconnect? <laughs> I don't see the void you're talking about. What I see is like an arm coming like out of it to reach up. So like if her whole yeah. figure is one clumped mass, it's the arm like trying to come up and grab her kid. Yeah, it's so like it's her just moving away from her. The arm is away from her. So you see this <laughs> as an arm, yeah. but if that's the arm, that wouldn't be yeah, the tiny void. Yeah. So and again, remember we're dealing with abstract art. Right? <laughs> it's not meant to be. They move the stomach. Oh, <laughs> um, over here with um, Catlett's, it's still there. I mean, it's there. It's independent, so to speak. I mean, whether it's independently, uh, independent sculpture or not, I don't know. But it's independent, but it's still in that place. <coughs> so it's interesting. They've basically done the same thing here. And I really don't know if Catlett, I'll have to look into this. Let's do a quick search. See if Catlett ever looked at Catlett's here. Something tells me she didn't because she was so rooted in Mexico. And she was friends with like Frida Kahlo and those groups. I mean, again, really cutting edge. Um, but I just don't think Hepper better cross that. I don't think they would have. I, I don't think they would have, but I could be wrong. But it is kind of interesting that you have two women artists treating this subject somewhat similarly, I think. Any other comments about this? Well, one being that, like, one sent her kids away. Which okay. Can sort of be the more distant. Sort of See, that's why it's so woman. easy to read that, right? Yeah, it's so easy. And that's what he was talking about. Yeah. How, like, she, she gave away her kids, but then her art was her kids, and that's how much she gave <laughs> to her art. <laughs> and that's the way she would treat a child, but then like, and it was parent, or um, there is that sort of like odd distance thing. It, it's it. Yeah. I mean, what it was like. That was a long article about Catlett um, and Hepper. Can I have mentioned it? I shouldn't have told her. I'll that on my own time. Uh, were you trying to make fear more with an abstract feeling that was connected to those other traditions? Um, over a period of time, yes, I was trying to learn how they use form to express an emotion or idea. I found more of it in African or pre-Columbian sculpture than I did in a lot of other work. And I found, <laughs> Who's that speaking? Uh, this well, is Cat. Okay. Uh, and I found the same thing in Moore's work, but not in Barbara Hepworth. Oh, oh. Her work was more abstract. Okay, okay. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay. No, that's I don't want to look at that critic. She could lie. They also lie. Yeah. Yeah. They lie on the time. They lie. <laughs> they are human. Okay, so first of all, that, that's I'm glad you found it. It shows she did see her work. Right, this, and, but I'm not just like think that she's copying her either. Right? I don't even know what the dates are. What was the date on this? Can someone do this in the meeting? This is 34. I think that's before the meeting. Am I making that up? Uh, in one I found it said that she developed an affinity for African sculpture, the German expressionist Emily Nold, and mm Hype -hmm. Talbots, and the British modernist Henry Moore and Barbara Hepworth. Okay, okay. So 1934. I think. But it's interesting though that she would deny. Again, I don't want to read too much of the things, but it is interesting she would deny the Hepworth influence because more was just as abstract. That, that's a ridiculous statement. No offense. She could have just seen a, a fish swimming through coral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I see. That was what I first saw. Well, I think I will also super emphasize making it more socially, like, like, like for the lower classes to be able to understand her work. Who the who Catwalk? No, oh, um, Catwalk, Cat Catlett, Catlett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this is a good point. Go ahead. Oh, I don't, oh wait, was that? No, it was Hepworth. I can do some. All right, Hepworth wanted to make her art more socially. No, shoot. I think it's Catwalk. Yeah. 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 Hepworth is more concerned about form. So she then could not so get she as content. much into yeah, so making sure like it's the, the like images are readable from an audience. She's right. more about like the aesthetic effects. Right, right. Uh, and so that's why I mean, and I don't mean this in a derogatory way at all, but that's why Catlett's Catlett's work does have a kind of a folksy feel to it because she, you know, as we said at the beginning, she was very socially conscious, 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 conscious. 
It's too late to be teaching class. Um, and so, you know, she wants to make it, as you say, relatable to the working class. Whereas F Hepworth, she's just looking um, too simple, but, you know, sort of wealthier patrons. Yeah? yeah. So, so that accounts for many ways for sort of the abstract versus, although Catholic is still abstracted, right? Yeah. She's still aware of these, these movements, clearly, um, and is engaging in them. Um, and as you said, looking to the African um, influence. Okay. But while we're still on Hepworth, though, I do want to talk about this idea of carving being associated with uh, masculinity and um, our male artists and molding or, or sculpt, modeling, molding, whatever you want to call it, um, as being a more feminine or um, more oriented towards <coughs> female artists. It's very much a gender thing. And we talked about this at the beginning of the semester, right? That's why, you know, we really don't... Even now, wood carving is... If you go to a wood carving class in my high school, it's all men. Well, wasn't it Catlett? One of them. Catlett? I think it was Catlett that had to fight to get her wood cutting. She was the only... Right? Probably. I think that was in the article. Maybe I read that somewhere else. She was the only... Um, yeah, yeah they, am I right? They wouldn't let her in and she had to fight because it was well, guys and they had to fight to get into it. <laughs> work, 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 work. You shall not pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can see them making and like sculpting and carving their own little Gandalf staff and just. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because she like later went on to teach sculpture at Howard University. Yeah, and yeah. And yeah. she was like head of the department. Right, right. And, and again, this is what we tend to see with a lot of these women artists. Is it, they were pretty successful. It's not just like there has been an argument that um, we just kind of are feminist art historians have just kind of randomly gone around and found token women and actually add them to the canon. Do you know what I mean by the canon? Right? What we consider to be good art, um, important art, whatever that is. And um, but when we're looking at all three of these, we're very successful artists, right? It, it's not like we're just finding sure. people. Yes, exactly. Um, so let's talk about this idea of sculpting, I mean, uh, carving being male and modeling or molding being female. Why do you think, where did that come from based on what we talked about this class? I think it's the idea that it takes a lot of strength to be able to carve. I mean, I've never carved before, but from what I've gathered from, you know, stuff on TV and reading things about it, it takes a lot of precision, but a lot of strength to be able to get it through all the way. You know what that sounds like to me? Hmm. It sounds a little bit like pot doing pottery on the wheel. <laughs> yeah, okay, the physical... Um, that, that's how it felt like to me, anyway. Because, like, like literally you're saying that? Yeah, oh, okay. like when I was, if I was trying to center something, sometimes I felt like I didn't have enough strength. I was kind of just free practice with a gem, and I was like, oh, it was hard day! <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> carving is kind of like a violent action. Yes. <laughs> Lauren, can you hear us okay? I don't know. Say that again. I could hear everything up until like the last two things. They were just like echo, 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 echo. I think. I think. Now you're really quiet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, the so part of it like is the physical nature of it, and it's not very dainty, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I talked to you about this as well. There's this something I'm kind of like, uh, it's the this idea. Um, Professor Kelly and I talking about that. Idea that she's actually she me. But it was considered, you know, like the other day, when I, was, I wasn't kidding when I said when we were doing our demo, that it would have been, it, it's kind of sexual. I mean, why do you think they had that whole scene in Ghost around her spinning, right? It, it, it has this sort of, uh, there's the real It has that whole thing. Not just the place open, but it's also that, you know, she's handling these materials, they're wet, and they're just kind of, and so there really been this idea that women handling these materials, which is inappropriate. I know that sounds unbelievable, but it's just true. So I think there's that aspect of it. Right. Well. Yeah. Yeah. If handling things like that is too vulgar for a woman, how is uh, sculpture feminine? Well, I think I mean, I don't. I would say it was really never 
for feminized. And in a way, maybe that's why Hepworth has such a hard time with the critics, is because she's feminizing something that's been traditionally masculine. And again, Camille Claudel, French artist in the late 20th century. She, um, she was not abstract, but she was still cutting edge. Um, and um, she, does anybody know her story? She's fascinating. So she was. Um, she's sort of, I think you showed us a photo of her, and she's really tiny next to one of her giant skulls. That was Harriet Cosmer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is she the one with the Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There you go. Connecting the dots. Yeah. And, but I took a class with Killian, and we talked about. She did the hands and feet, right? Yes. Yes. Or faces, faces and, and hands. He came and basically destroyed her career, yeah. and she. <laughs> Went insane, destroyed most of her work. It's just a sad. And there's still pieces that they don't know whether it it's truly was his or whether it was hers and yeah. he put his name on it. Yeah. And again, just the fact that there wasn't a name for female sculptor shows that I don't think it was ever really feminized. I think, I mean, nowadays I think that's not typical sculpt. I mean, anyone with like contemporary artists would work in installation, right? Mixed media, those <laughs> The tradition of, I mean, it's still there, right? But in this sort of, you know, market, art, art world market, it, that we kind of moved away from that a little bit. Although certainly you saw examples in the research this week that are still alive and well in many ways. But, but what I'm saying is I would argue that it was never really feminized, I, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think that's a fair reading of it. Yeah. <laughs> and why do you think that, that it's okay for the mold, modeling, the molding, the... Well, it seems a lot more fluid, and it seems like it'd be a more gentle process, and that kind of gives you plus the tools as well. That's mm -hmm. true. I mean, mm -hmm. with carving, you have these violent sharp tools, and you have to carry around a tool belt, which is totally <laughs> don't require. They're too delicate. Or ridiculous mm -hmm. amount of strength. Right, right. And I still go back to the nature thing, right? Yeah. Right, that you're taking something from the earth, because you could argue. I, mean, I know we were going to talk about Maria Martinez at the beginning, but I decided not to because it's just too much to cover and probably can still fall behind, but that's okay. But, um, you know, of course, she's down in the earth, you know, and, you know, she's down there doing that. But uh, again, it's more, it's because she's sort of one with the earth, right? And she would, in, in terms of how they understood, the Pueblo understood or understand, you know, making these objects. Um, so, I, but, I, but what I say, what I'm getting at is I think this modeling or molding is still kind of associated with another nature. Right and transforming Mother Nature, and so it's feminized, and that's why I think it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah Lauren. I was just agreeing. Yeah. I mean, did you ever think about how many things are genders? I think this goes with the idea that a lot of spoken language is very gendered. I mean, mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, I did a design language for a bit, and to say sculptor, you would just say sculpture person. There was no gender behind it. It was just a person who sculpts is, at the basic sense, what you're signing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. someone who works, someone who, a person, no gender, who does this, who does that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like Spanish or French, now is a gender. Yeah, I mean, it was, uh, I can't remember who it was, I think it was Lacan. He said, um, he's a theorist, a psychoanalytical theorist, he's a student of Freud, and, and he talks about how, um, you know, it's like a form of it's a trauma, so to speak, that the children, and he used this scenario, I'm not making it up, that the child gets off the platform of the train and goes to the ladies' room. This is how I should explain this little scenario. And the child has to choose to go into the male bathroom or the female bathroom. And he sees that as like almost a point of trauma in an individual's life because at that point they're forced to choose. <laughs> um, but I mean, we are in such a gender. Yeah. I mean, I'm actually, you know, we have actor, actress, waiter, waitress, but we don't have like sculptor, sculptress or something. Mm -hmm. I'm actually but, surprised by that. But uh, actually, the reason I brought up Lacan is because he ties it in with language. He says once the once you engage in language, it's a whole psychoanalytical. There's all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. But that it, it's a it's a form of loss. Mm -hmm. Lauren, I, 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 uh, other other how they look at it. Like I'm in Spanish, the noun for sculpture is a feminine word. Mm -hmm. La escultura. Uh huh. And I wonder, like, if other languages, if it's feminine or if it's male or how they view it, because I think that might skew yeah. how how it's viewed as a whole. 
That's a good point. It's la sculpture in French. Sculpture. La is feminine. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I don't, I don't know enough about the history of that to know, because when you learn a language, you're like, it's random, right? Isn't that what you learn? <laughs> you're taught it's random, just learn it. But I wonder how much of it is random, you know, in terms of the, you know, the gender. But anyway, yeah, we live in a highly gendered world. I don't think we think about it often. Um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about the um, the catlet. Or sorry, I keep wanting to say catlet. The alulu. Um, I like how on her face she she looks very content. Like she's happy to be pregnant. She's happy mm -hmm. to be carrying this mm -hmm. life with her. She looks at peace. Mm. Mm. You, know, you know, it's interesting because is she at peace? Why is it called like zero hour? That's a little menacing. I mean, it's not a. Well, they discussed stuff about that one sculpture. It was like her between life and death. Right. Wouldn't right. zero hour be referring to like this is when she. Oh, zero hour for the baby? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess I just see what does anybody know why this screen is? Can you click? Yeah. yeah. Can you click? Can you break them? It happened once before in literary art criticism. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we never yeah. got it fixed. Yay, Max. All right, let me take a look. Yay, Max. Yeah, what are you You're just going to drag around a picture. Yeah. Um, Green plus button. <laughs> What's Sorry, Lauren, we're just trying to fix this. Do now. You're fun. I, I can't use a Mac to save my life, so I'd be doing even worse. Yeah. It won't even let me go into a new screen. It won't let me go. It won't let me do anything. Yeah, it didn't oh. just click one. Okay, you got it. I just pressed escape. That was a little easy. <laughs> Is it working? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, oh, no. Well, this won't move it. <laughs> okay, isn't this strange? Look at that. All right. Well, we'll just look at the. Oh no. <laughs> Can you turn off screen? You can't do anything now. Can you just give us a few instead? Uh, oh. I do not have a lot of technology. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. Uh, I can't I'm even tell results for that like string of consonants you got. Yeah. What about, did you say? I'm surprised how many results they have on Google. <laughs> that is true. Did you ever say it? Okay. Well, I can't even get back to something. I just want to start I'm going to, yeah, no, won't do I know that. Well, it's, well, the toe didn't bounce. Yeah, yeah. It, might, yeah. it might be the mouth. Yeah, it's because it was it's doing this in Penel 202 for a while. But, but you have to, we have to, like, shut it all down. Yeah. Um, we, like, unplugged it. Okay, Lauren, I'm so sorry, but we're going to have to shut it down. So I'll, I'll send you an invite. Sorry. All right, that's all right. Okay. Let's see. So... Actually, one more thing I want to say about heifers. So we'll have to. I want to come back to her because. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm not
you're like, yes. <laughs> 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 No one will have joy over here. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Bring Blair joy. Uh -huh. Are you going to be Blair? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> 